And we hope and pray that you guys have wonderful holidays uh, with family, with friends. But you know what? Let's not let's try not to disconnect from from our our brothers and sisters in the Lord, because we need to stay together, and united. Iron sharpens iron. You know, and and there are times when people in the holidays, some people feel depressed, feel down, or or we know that when we are going to break, sometimes the devil, you know, tries to come in and bring division. The Bible says we're not ignorant of, of his devices and the way that he works right so we have to be sober you know because he runs like a roaring lion so it's really important that we stay together communicating calling each other texting each other emailing if you do facebook twitter all that good stuff you know go ahead because we need to to stay uh strong you know and and, and give uh, prayers for each other you know give a good word amen yeah. United as a family, and as a family in a ministry, we sure have come a long way this year, right? A lot of us have overcome some obstacles, some boundaries, we've grown, our marriages have become healthy, we've used our marriage as a tool, ministering to others, some of us are still being ministered to. But that is the purpose. I mean, we just want to right now take a moment and honor God for what He's done. Reflect on where God has brought us through this year. I mean, we take for granted sometimes, unless you kind of keep a prayer journal, of what God has given you victory of. Especially if it's been a little while and you're completely delivered it. Sometimes you forget to look back and honor God for that. Let's not forget that it was that victory that we're going to use to speak life into somebody else. Because someone else is going through that in their marriage. <laughs> Amen. And as my wife said, you know, there's there's a lot of things that God has done in this ministry and in our lives, personally and as a couple. God has been so good. You know, and, and as we say, you know, even the trials, we have to be thankful for the yes. trials. And we know we're coming into a new year and there's a lot of things that, that are going to come that are going to be so many blessings. And even, even blessings come, in, come hidden in a, in a trial because it's a test that we got to overcome so we can grow and we can mature. Yeah. So in, in, with that in mind, we have, we have seen, you know, people grow. We have seen people really step up, Amen. take the calling of God and, and run with it. And the Bible says that we have to be ready in season and out of season. And that we need to keep our testimonies like ready in the tip of our tongue. It says we were over, overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yeah. Psalm 71, 15 says, My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. You know? See, uh, and speaking about testimony, we want to invite somebody. We have we have a couple that uh, we love dearly. We they're a family. We really have get, got to know each other and their kids and everything, and really have them as family now. They're not just brothers; and sisters, they're really brothers and sisters of ours. And uh, this year, I mean, I'm sorry, this month they were featured in our in our Soli Dio Gloria uh, uh, magazine newsletter. And uh, some of you already, if you received the magazine, you know a little bit about them. But um, they're going to come and tell us a little bit what they have overcome throughout this year and <coughs> through the uh, grace of God. So let's welcome Art and Laura, our salutes.
Seventeen-year-old, sixteen-year-old, uh, nine-year-old, and a five-year-old. Um, big range, and we got a grandson and a granddaughter on the way in a couple of weeks. Amen. Yeah, so we're we're a pretty big family. Um, very blessed. And very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> big family. Yeah. Yes, it's quite a scene at the dinner table. <laughs> um, with that, with our you know, big family, and then our you know, brothers and sisters, and nieces and nephews. You can imagine, especially now with the holidays coming up, what a scene that's going to be. But no, but we are blessed. We are blessed to have every, every one of them. Um, yes? Here? Better? There we go. Um, in these uh, almost 12 years of marriage, uh, we've also, we've had our obstacles, we've had our differences, we've had our struggles and issues, our trials. Um, about two and a half years ago, I found my way here. We had gotten to a point where we were done with our marriage. We had so many struggles and trials that we didn't think we would overcome, but fortunately I found my way here first, um, came to know Fernando Naraka and Anthony and the minister. We met our, our new family now. But like I said, we were blessed and I was blessed then. And then I was amazed by the unity of the group and, uh, and the way everybody stuck together. And then coming to the Tuesday classes, uh, came to find out, you know what, I wasn't alone. I was not alone in our, you know, with our differences in marriages and stuff. I said, we came to a point where we were done. I said, we came to a point, um, a big obstacle, a big trial in our, in our lives, not just our marriages, our lives that uh, I didn't think we would ever overcome. Um, but luckily, through the grace of God and the team here, and, you know, we, we're still working on it, but we definitely have come a long way. Amen. And so um, um, to a lot of you that are here, um, that are going through stuff now, the new members that are here, um, like I said, that you can do it. It can, it can be done Amen. with God's help. Amen. God's help and then this unity, this family here. Um, like I said, I, I know I've come a long way. I've definitely changed with the help of the ministry. Um, I've learned to just push my personal issues aside and to you know, think of God first. What would God want me to do? What does God ask of me to do? Right. And then in that sense, I know he's asking me to love him all, you know, love on my wife. Yeah. Love on my wife first. Then the kids and so on and so on. Right. When you came, did you come together? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to share that when we first, well, when my husband, um, we were separated, ready for divorce. We had given up. My husband was invited to the marriage ministry, and I was totally against it when he invited me. He came on his own for three months. He kept asking me and encouraging me, and I was very prideful, and I, I, I wouldn't give in. And then he started um, bringing our children, and I saw the change in my children, and also seeing the change in him. And I reflected, I said, I have to fight for my marriage. I can't let him do it on his own. Yeah. And I showed up to a Tuesday um, class, and I felt, and I was told too, that that class, that um, topic was for us, it fit us. And from that day on, I felt that that was our calling. You know, we had to go through what we went through. We had a lot of challenges um, that we, now we have so much victory Amen. that Amen. Now, we never thought that, you know, we would be able to overcome so many challenges that we were faced. Um, 
some that know us know our challenges, that it was, it was a lot, that we never thought that we would be able to overcome it. And being here, you know, with this unity, with this marriage ministry, um, for me, I didn't have spiritual background. So that was my, um, I guess, that's how I was defeated. I was um, filled with um, pride, I was selfish. So when I started attending Abundant and mar the marriage ministry, I was challenged. I was challenged and, and I had to start dying to myself and start giving more. And that's when I saw the transformation. And now I know in my heart that I have a calling. I'm going to serve and um, use our testimony to be able to help other marriages and not um, let them know, you know, share that any challenge that comes your way with the grace of God and Him by your side, everything is possible. Amen. Amen. share of how our children have transformed. Like I said, we have a, a wide range of you know, ages in their, their kids, but the one who has really uh, come a long way, really, I think, is uh, our daughter, Emily, our nine-year-old. Um, and like I said, I was bringing her around, uh, and I was coming to the marriage ministry, bringing her in, you know, to abundant land, and, and letting her, wanting her to experience, you know, what it is to, to know of God. Um, before that, before I started coming around to the marriage ministry, I, we never talked about it at home. Yet she was baptized Catholic, but that was the extent of her knowledge of, of, of the Lord. Um, coming here, she got to learn, and then the conversation started. You know, asking them, her asking questions, and then I mean, now she's grown so much in these last two and a half years that uh, she leads us in prayer at home. Wow. <laughs> We try to pray daily. Uh, again, we try. I'm gonna be honest. We try, you know. But if if we don't get around to it, and she'll remind. She'll remind us. Dad, we're gonna pray. Mom, are we gonna pray? And when it's time, when we're about to eat and whatnot, she's she's quick. I want to pray. I want to. I want to lead us in prayer. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, we can get rid of the table and <laughs> she goes for that. Um, so so we, we've definitely come a long way. You know, like I said, with the help of the ministry and with the help of all of you here, and we're very appreciative. We're very blessed to have you guys in our lives, and just keep going from here. invited probably three or four other couples one of the couples that they invited just got married Saturday yesterday a couple that had been together for 17 years just in the relationship boy and girlfriend they had children they didn't know the Lord they were in sin and they brought them they ministered to them they came along and they got delivered God's already used them mightily in a lot of different ways. We're just so blessed for you. Praise God. That's what it's all about, telling everyone about Jesus. But the uh, the theme of the women's conference was making Jesus famous. Yes. Let's make him famous. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. All right. Well, praise God for their testimony. Praise God for their growth. Praise God that they keep growing. They're, they stay involved and they stay connected. And that's, that's what we do. That's what we want. To get you involved, connected. It's all for the glory of God. It's not for us. It's not for any any team member. It's for God. It's for Jesus. Yeah. And it's it's just to bring others to the kingdom, yeah. to bring others to repentance, to bring others to to know what Jesus has done already for us. Amen. 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 Not only do we want to reflect upon what God has brought us through and done for us thus far, we want to take a few minutes and evaluate where we are individually right now, because we're getting ready to wind up this year and wrap it up. We won't be, you know, having others to minister us to regularly. We won't have the exact same accountability, hence we exchange contact information. 
But now we want us to take a look at ourselves. Where are we? Where have we come through? Where are we now? And where are we going? Okay, so take a few minutes, five, ten minutes, and complete these self-evaluations. Just be open, honest, true to yourself. Don't write your name on them. We do want to collect them afterward. So don't write your name. We want to take you know, a spiritual temperature of this group so we can plan and project for next year as well. Yes. So um, take some time. Uh, as it says there, there's, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just be honest with yourself. Where are you right now? And don't put your name on it. You know, because as my wife said, we're, we want to get him back and kind of like get, get an understanding of where we are. What, what we need to focus on for this coming year? Well, what are the areas that that we can be effective in ministering and 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 talk about those those topics. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. That's why we, we want to take an examination and take inventory of where we are with Jesus right now. All you have to do is just put a mark of what fits better uh, the statement. Anybody needs a pen? Brother Frank has pens. Amen. <laughs>
you're done, you can just raise your hand. Jim's more than walking around collecting them. We thank you for your transparency, and we pray that you took a moment to make a commitment to yourself at the bottom of the floor. What area can you grow in? What are your commitments to the Lord going forward into this next year? Listen to the song right now. <laughs> revelation about yourself. Amen, right? A couple of us, a couple of us said, wow, maybe I thought I was further along than I am, or maybe I'm further along than I thought. <laughs> no matter where we are, we all need to grow. We all need to press in. We all need more, regardless of how much devotional time or how much word we're getting or how much study we're getting. We all need to press in. If we're not growing or moving forward, we're sliding back, right? We're backsliding. And I saw some people like, like what you got in the four, man? <laughs> to each other. What you got in this one? <laughs> Spouses tend to do that to each other, right? <laughs> hey, if we're one, I gotta copy your answer. <laughs> <laughs> we're one. Amen, amen. Everybody's done? Everybody need a couple more minutes? All right. Brother James is walking around and uh, Sister Lori looking them up. All right. Well, you know, after what well, we just took a self evaluation inventory of where we are, as my wife said, and some of us got revelation or, on where we are. See, the, here's the thing. This is what we're going to talk about a little bit. No matter where 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 you are today spiritually, or no matter where the circumstances in your, in your marriage right now, the shortcomings or the surprises that uh, that have put us to be in less of a dreamy present. See, we can't look to the past to make it better. We can only commit to a better future starting now, from this day forward. But from this point on, we're committed to a better future. We're going to talk a little bit, a, a few points that we can we can start establishing now to have a better future from this day forward. Let's be mindful. The most important thing is always, always, literally, to seek God, to seek God with our whole life, our whole being, our whole existence. God isn't only in church. God isn't only with us on Sunday. God needs to be our entire life and our existence. What's something you could ask God to do that would make you a better partner to your spouse? So you want to be a better steward, a better servant to God, and also a better steward and servant to your spouse. We want to become the kind of person that we want to be married to. Right? We want to begin by committing at least to pray together every day. My husband and I, whenever we are blessed enough and asked to come up here, generally we are emphasizing prayer. We realize what a marriage that prays together or family that prays together stays together. One percent of marriages that pray together daily are likely to end up in divorce. One percent. We need that spiritual foundation. We need to be coming against the spiritual things. We need to be able to cover our spouse in prayer, to cover our marriage, protect our marriage in prayer. We cannot emphasize it enough. How many are praying together daily? Many. A good portion. And the rest of us that aren't, we need to. It's something that, is just like we wake up and brush our teeth, we need to pray together. You're going to be susceptible to spiritual attack regardless, but at least be prayed up to be able to arm yourself against the enemy. Fear the Lord and obey him. Psalm 112.12 reads, How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. So not only are we covering our marriage, we're covering our children. We're coming against generational curses and spiritual things in high places, and we're building up our spiritual legacy. The other thing that, that we need to do is help our mate to be a better steward of his gifts and abilities. We need to help them recognize how God has used them in the past, has used their gifts and abilities in the past. We need to help them recognize their convictions. How do we do this? By communication. What are the things that we like, dislike? 
What are the things that, that gives a conviction? What are the things in, in certain verses of the Bible? How do they apply to us? So if we determine what he or she is willing to, to die for, they can ultimately determine what they can live for. Okay? 1 Peter 4.10 4, says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As being good stewards, we have to be mindful of our spiritual gifts. Are we aware of our spiritual gifts? Are we teachers? Are we expounders? Are we intercessors? What are our gifts and what are your spouse's gifts? You need to, iron sharpens iron. We need to be aware of why we're here. What is our role and our part in the body of Christ? Are we walking in the spiritual gifts? We all have spiritual gifts, but have we taken ownership of them? You, as a child, you know, when you're five years old, your, your father can give you a pony, but unless you take ownership and you possess it, then it's really not yours. How many of us are walking around with spiritual gifts that we don't possess and we're not even aware of? How can we help our spouse be a better steward of their gift if we don't know what it is and we don't know what ours is? We need, we need to be mindful also in walking in our gifts to remain pure. It's so hard in this polluted society to stay pure, to keep your ear gates, your heart gate, your mouth gate clean and pure. I just want to do a little sidebar real quick because lately I've been saying stuff that I have been mindful of. And in my dream, Pastor Diego came to me and told me, be silent. <laughs> I was thinking, should I go tell him no? Creepy, right? <laughs> But we have to be mindful of what we say. Are we speaking life? People spend months planning for their wedding, but sometimes they neglect to make planning for their marriage the priority. We may not be fully aware of how habitual our thoughts and behaviors could be threatening our unity. Because the marriage bed is God's standard for sexual intimacy, it's also the place that suffers the most when sexual baggage is brought into a relationship. Again, the society is polluted. There's pornography at the click of a button, at your phone, at your fingertips. It's what this generation is struggling with the most. Whether it's from a promiscuous past, sexually charged music, racing novels, racing movies, unhealed wounds from abuse, or exposure, again, to pornography, any source of sexual stimulation outside the content of marriage is dangerous to your marriage. We have to be mindful of the stimuli around us. She's amazing, isn't she? <laughs> I love my wife. Very much. She's the love of my life. I know. <laughs> also, pray as a couple that God will use you to accomplish His purpose. Yes. As recorded in the first Chronicle 4.10, 4, Jabez prayed, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause any pain. See, what did Jabez, did I pronounce that right? Jacob? Okay. What did he, what did he ask uh, uh, us to ask God to do? It says, bless him. Give him a new turf and enlarge the sphere of influence that he has. Keep him from temptation and stay with him. See, pray this prayer with your mate, and at the end of the year, you will see how different your life will be. You know why? Because the, at the end of that verse says, and God granted him everything that he requested. Amen? Amen. One of the major issues in marriage is, um, and we're all afflicted with it, is conflict fighting. We need to learn how to fight fair, right? Unless we have the tools, and we were going over this last Sunday in the women's group, unless you have the right tools, you're just gonna try to use your hammer on everything. And most of them would know it's not, you can't use a hammer on everything. You need to have the right tools in communication, and all the right tools are going to come from the Word of God. So we have to be in the Word of God to know how to apply Scripture and prayer in our conflict. So all couples fight, but how you fight can mean the difference between a, main, a minor disagreement and a major damaging volatile fight. <coughs> Healthy couples fight for resolution, not for victory. We want to be righteous, not right. Conflict isn't a relationship killer. It's what you do with it, it's how you react, it's how you respond. Are you pushing the buttons? Are you putting on love? Are we denying ourselves and dying to self in the midst of conflict, honoring God? 
that's the main thing. First Corinthians 3, 4, 8, love suffers long as it kind. So it isn't short, it isn't impatient, and it isn't rude, right? Love does not envy, so it's not jealous at all, it's understanding. Love does not parade itself, so it's not arrogant, it's not puffed up, it's humble, it knows humility. Love does not behave rudely, so it doesn't roll its eyes, it doesn't cross its arms, it doesn't turn its back, it doesn't snicker and snide. Love does not seek its own. That means you are looking to put your spouse first in every area. Not but he said or she said, but he did or he would. No. Love does not seek its own. It's not provoked. That means it doesn't, it doesn't get upset about little things. It just lets that roll off the shoulders. It thinks no evil. Love is constantly dwelling on what is good, what is pure, what is righteous, what is holy. Love rejoices in iniquity, but rejoices in truth and bears all things. Bears all things. Not, I'm just tired of it. And I deserve to be happy. No, it long suffers for all things. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. We need to build on love, sisters. With that, you know that everything that we read in 1 Corinthians 13, we know that love is not a feeling. It's an action. It's the things that we do. And a lot of times, we grew out of love. We're not loving. Him. Well, so what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Love suffers long. It's an action. It's something that we do. Feelings, they come and go. Some of you already have many different cravings and feelings about what you want to have for breakfast or lunch. <laughs> right? In 10 minutes, we've been hot and cold and uh, right? understanding and upset. Yeah, and, and that's, that's part of fighting fair. You, you want to know how we fight in our, in our home? I love you more. <laughs> <laughs> Think of We're a normal couple, but we understand this. Why are we wasting our time in this fight? Because we're not going anywhere. But tell them how we fight. I love you more. I love you more. No, I love you more. I love you the most. No, that's our fight. <laughs> <laughs> the, ne the next thing that um, that we do is gotta have fun. You gotta have fun in marriage. You know, a lot of times, you know, is that we oh we have so many financial strains and problems with the kids and it just <laughs> life has changed. See, do you have to keep pursuing your maid after you already? Caught them? The answer is yes. Amen. Yes. You have to make fun a priority. It may seem that like it's, it's a luxury we cannot afford anymore, but the real, reality is it is a necessary part of having a marriage that goes a distance. Fun is a requirement, and you can't choose to have fun with your spouse. You know, you can find recreational activities that you both enjoy. You can have, you know, walks in the street, in the park, whatever, something that is fun for you guys. Something that it is, it really brings joy into the life of your marriage and not just so con be concerned about business of life. And find out what your spouse likes to do. Do you know what your spouse's hobbies are? What your spouse's interests are? I mean, people change and grow constantly. And we have to be mindful not to go apart. So maybe your spouse used to like to hike two years ago, but not so much anymore because now it's feet hurt. Whatever the case is, <laughs> find out what your spouse likes. Discuss it. Make commitments to do it. It doesn't have to be expensive. Go on dates and have fun. We also want to be mentioned with all this that we never give up. We never give up. When you exchange your rings and those vows, and you entered into a covenant of marriage with God, you swore to God that you would love this spouse till death do us part. And like my husband says, even if you're a thorn in my side, till death do us part. <laughs> my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> Whatever you're facing, we've heard an awesome testimony. And so they didn't go into the half of what they were afflicted with, but they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. They really did. It could even be grounds for divorce, and oftentimes it is. Oftentimes the marriage covenant is broken, but we are forgiven with the measure we forgive. Amen. Right? So no matter what fault you find in your spouse, the truth is there are always ways that we ourselves need to grow and develop. Rather than looking at them, we need to look at ourselves. If that wedding band starts to feel more like a handcuff, then you may need to make a decision. You can design, decide to forgive what seems unforgivable. You decide to extend grace to your spouse daily for the little things and for the great things. You decide to own up to your own shortcomings, your own mistakes. 
When your car runs out of gas, don't sell it. <laughs> Just put more gas. You gotta fill up your love bank. Conscious effort to do so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Let God love through you, especially when you want to least. And never give up. The next thing, after we have a great marriage, what's the next thing that we do? If you've been with us for a while, you should know the answer of that. What is it that we are called to do? Say it again, say it again. Make disciples. Amen. Make disciples. Recognize the world's needs and respond with compassion and action. Matthew 936, we, 936 we read, And seeing the multitudes, he, Jesus, felt compassion for them. You and your mate need to be committed to doing something about our world. Many Christians today are walking in the middle of the road. They are so focused on what other people think that they, that they are unwilling to take any risk in order to make an impact uh, for Christ on other couples. It's important to make disciples. It's a commandment that God gave us. Amen? Amen. Our marriage is a tool. We're not in these classes and in this ministry just for marriage enhancement. That's just the first step. Absolutely, we want to learn what God says about our marriage. We want to walk in line with God's word, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. But once we get all that baggage out of the way, we need to use this as a tool. We need to go alongside other couples who are hurting, who are broken, who don't see the hope at that time, ministering to them, pouring love into them, showing them where they need to go and what they need to do, keeping them accountable, and us still being accountable to them as well. If you don't have a disciple, find a disciple and make sure that you are constantly being discipled. Man. See, with that in mind, you know, uh, as we gonna go, we're going to go into a break and uh, as we said, you know, exchange numbers and keep in touch, be in contact, stay united, stay strong, keep discipling. You know, we want to we, we wanna remind you of what we do. You know, when we get back, this is what comes back. Monday's Bible study. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, Second Timothy says, Second Timothy two fifteen says, study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we gotta be in Bible study. We gotta be hearing from Bart and Rowena, anointed couple. They they explain the, the the word of God really well, and they tell us what we need to how how to bring revelation of Scripture. So Bible studies on Mondays. On Tuesdays, do not forget, we have small groups. We heard, heard awesome testimony of what God is doing. We want to come alongside other couples, sharing the word. It's generally topical-based, so I'm sure God has a word for you. You get a fellowship, meet other couples. Really pour into them as they pour into you. That's Tuesdays in the cafe, small groups. It's generally less proud about this side, but we really become intimate and transparent. Tuesdays at 7 o'clock, once we get back on track. And that Romans 1.12 says, that is, that we may mutually encourage by each other's faith, both yours and mine. That's how we encourage each other in, on Tuesday nights. Then Wednesdays, Wednesdays, prayer and fasting on Wednesdays. Ezra 8.23 says, so we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. Fasting is really important in, in, as a Christian, as, a, as our daily uh, not daily life. Can you imagine we fast all day, every day? <laughs> but um, you know, the church starts a 21-day fast in January. You know, we gotta join it because we gotta join our prayers with pastors, standing in agreement, standing in the gap. But we also gotta get together as a ministry, as a team, to pray and fast on Wednesdays. There's so many people hurting. There's so many things to add, uh, request to ask God, but there's also a lot of praising to do on Wednesdays. We do need to come together corporately Wednesdays. It's generally from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you're not on the email blast, please come up to us, see us, so we can get you on there, so we can just join together, right? There's so much mighty and power when we come together in agreement, moving in the same direction. Friday night, we will begin a class also. Friday night at 7 o'clock, for those who can't make it throughout the week, we want to be available. Our motto is get in where you fit in. So Friday nights, we'll have a class. We'll have to see Robin for details right now about what time and where that will be. <laughs> and then Sundays. And of course, Sundays 8, 10, and 12. Um, Proverbs 18 and 15 says, An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. We gotta be in classes to learn, to, to get more understanding of the word of God. What it is to be a godly man, what it is to be a godly wife, what it is to be a godly marriage. Amen? Amen. So you know, you, you just you just uh, took a self-evaluation, you heard us, 
give you a good a uh, few points of how to how to have a purpose in your marriage. Now let's let's give you a little assignment. Tell this to each other right now. Face each other and tell these to each other. No, no, you don't have to stand up. It's okay. It's okay, no problem. So, okay, you ready? Leave the past in the past. Leave the past in the past. Let every day be a new day. Let every day be a new day. From this day forward. From this day forward. We can decide what we want our marriage to be. We can decide what we want our marriage to be. We can't change the past. We can't change the past. But God can change our future. But God can change our future. If you believe that, seal it with a kiss and say amen in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> amen. All right, so just to summarize real quick. Keep your marriage simple, focus, and Christ-centered. And you'll have the marriage that most people only dream about. Amen. Seek God, stay pure, fight fair, have fun, never give up, and disciple. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to, oh, right on time. Um, anybody want to share anything before we close in prayer? All right. I want to share um, with Art and Laura. Um, I remember I heard about the to be one marriage from Steve, and our marriage was ordinary. It was steady Eddie. You know, we thought we had a good good marriage, and then we went to the class, and I remember when Art went alone. It was, I think, our second time coming. And I remember this humbleness of a man to show, which I thought my husband needed to see, that men can be humble and it's okay to show your vulnerability. And Art showed that. And by showing that, I saw weeks later, maybe I think it was months later, Laura coming in. And I saw her with her arms crossed. And I saw that. So, you know, my whole point is that that encouraged me to continue to come to the 2B1 and make my marriage better. It, um, it surrounded my husband with true Christian men that weren't haughty, that you know, it's made him a better person. It made me, by being surrounded by better women, um, to know how to fight fair. Mm -hmm. And it altered my thinking and my heart on when I, I still get mad, I'm redhead. <laughs> yeah, I still get angry, but I don't get angry in the way that I used to. I'm not angry. I, I'm able to voice the opinions, and, and he, we may still disagree, but it's minutes, and then we forget about it. It's not these days of anger. But I want to thank you guys, because you showed us that the 2B1 marriage really does work. And I, I just encourage everyone that even if you think you don't have problems, still come, because you'd be amazed at the little things that come up that can en enrich your life and make you, if you're just steady Eddie, to get you where you want to be to become better. Amen. That's a really good point. A good marriage is the enemy of a great marriage. Because when you're not in conflict or have a lot of issues, you think, I don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah. But there's nothing sharpening you and forcing you to get closer to God, right? So come in and fellowship regardless. <laughs> well, one of the first things that we saw when we came to this church was um, pastor was talking about marriage, and that's a, a whole other uh, testimony, but what I wanted to mention is when we first started coming here, um, Robin was on the big video and she was talking about the Monday night class at her home, the Bible study, and I saw people that were married going to Robin and Stan's home for the Bible study and I was like, oh my goodness, I would love for us to connect with that. And we did, and we just love it so much. It's, it's like family to us, and it's helped us so much. And I just want to say to anyone who hasn't gone to the Monday Night Bible Studies, you know, make it a point in 2015 to get yourself plugged into that because it's so wonderful. The fellowship is so beautiful, and, you know, it just, you know, warmed our hearts, and we felt so embraced when we started coming to that. And God has used you both mightily already. You've been led prayer and led other groups and led topics. So we just really appreciate what a blessing you are to this ministry. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Connie, and I would like to thank the marriage ministry a lot. It's helped me a lot with family and friends, and I'm always doing discipling. Even when I was coming to class right now, I saw a couple arguing. I go, you got to go to the marriage to be with. <laughs> and they said, really? What, where is it? I said, I know it's a short notice, but it's um, you know, in the first building in Suite 101, uh, 105, I tell them Suite. And I go, it's in the educational building. I go, I think you would really like that class. It's been a blessing to me because of my family. And when I see a little dispute here and there, I go, come on, let's go to the family let's talk. <laughs> so I talk and pray, and it's really, really been helpful. I think the ministry, all the couples are great. They have love, and I like the way you look at your husband when he's talking. It's like you just keep an eye on him, and you just, I think it's so beautiful. So I just want to thank everybody in this ministry, and meeting new friends has been really a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, anyone else want to share? Andy! I've been sitting back here thinking about this and then you keep asking. So. <laughs> Confirmation? Praise, oh, I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Um, we had a prayer meeting uh, uh, a couple few weeks Was it last week we had? Okay. And a few of us came and, and some of you were at that. And, and, and uh, I, I think the message for everybody in this room. Okay, and pastors uh, talking about the just being inquiring versus getting an invitation from God to step out. I believe God is wanting to stretch everybody in this room in 2015. Yes. Okay, that stretch is to reach out and, 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 and it might be uncomfortable, but God's going to ask each one of us to, to, to take it to the next level, whatever that is, whatever God's telling you for 2015. And the word is that you as couples are destined for greatness, okay? So, heed that, listen to the Holy Spirit, and the, and the story I have, the metaphor for this is, is I gotta tell you about the dog up in Alaska, his name is Granite. Granite, upon this rock I'll build my church, okay? Granite was a dog that was severely injured, and he was a sled dog, and uh, his owner was a, a female named Susan Butcher, and the vet says, put the dog down. He's not gonna make it. She says, no, he's destined for greatness. She nursed him back to life, and that dog was put in the lead in her, de her, her uh, team. And then, the, and you all know about the Iditarod, the dog race up in Alaska it goes from Nome to, uh, to uh, Anchorage. And she put that dog in the lead, and that dog, after being nursed back to life, brought her through a storm, a bad storm, 17 hours ahead of her nearest competitor, and broke the record in the Iditarod, okay? So that's what God can do. Have you been in storms of life? Have you, have you been through some storms this past year? Are you going to go through some more storms? With his leading, you're going to get through that, and you're going to leave your competitor, the enemy, far behind. So just listen to God and let him stretch you this year because you're destined for greatness. Amen. Amen. Oh, sorry, the dog reminds me of Sea Biscuit, the, the horse. <laughs> Um, I just want to share really fast because I'm not really going to talk you too much, but we um, stepped up, we stepped up, and I told my husband, I'm so tired of coming to class and saying, oh, we're busy in our schedules. I said, we are going to do the eight weeks. We're going to class. No matter what we have to do, come looking the way we're looking, we're going to class. And I'm telling you, the humbleness that we have, I miss my husband so much throughout the day. I do not feel like, oh my gosh, good, okay, I'm getting some time away from him. I literally miss him. The humbleness we have is the peace of God, the Holy Spirit in our marriage, that if I try to say something to him, and you know, most Puerto Ricans, like, you know, Evelyn was, we're very hot to, or tempered, you know? Used to be. Used to be. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, we're hot tempered, that's not even me anymore. You know, the humbleness, and I can say I'm very submissive to my husband. Yes, I am, because I have God in the center of my marriage. And I just praise God here in marriage ministries. I always look at, especially you, Yuraka, how you look at your husband, the love, and I know that's God because you're keeping him in the center. And what it has taught us, it's like we want to bring, you know, everyone in. And that's all we keep saying is they're like, how do you guys, you know, just look like you've been dating or how long you've been dating? And um, we're like, well, actually, you know, God brought us back together after being divorced and everything. 
that now it's like when we were separated, I was going to meet him, discuss something about our son. And without saying a word, the lady that was in front, I walked in the restaurant, she was like, he's waiting for you. And I looked at her like, how did you know that that, and she goes, you two belong together. Oh. And I already knew how God intended for us to be back together, but this time we're doing it the right way. That's all. Just come. God's restore of all things. Amen. Praise God. First lady. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add off of what everyone was saying because um, what, like Tanya said, it is a family. And when you come to the 2B1 marriage ministry, you do see a lot of situations where people have testimonies to share. Like on Tuesday small groups, you go in there and you see people's body language, maybe because Steve got hold of them, and they start coming and they not have wanted to come. People sometimes say, this was our last hope. We were talking to work, and we said, we'll give it a try. And you start seeing over time, like as they come and they're sharing, and all the people who are around, how they're pouring into them. And, and you know, everyone is going through similar situations, but some people aren't getting and divorce and then over time the couple that may have not even wanted to touch they're all on each other they're laughing and they're like look at god it is a blessing just to be a part of that and then it's also a blessing just to um to be around fellow Christian women and your husband around Christian men yes. who can show your husband if he's not a leader to be that lead or to cleanse his wife with the word or to just do what the word says because all of us are not perfect you know although we know what the word says sometimes it takes being around the right people to reinforce what the scripture says. Amen. And when you have Christian people who will keep it real with you and tell you, you know you're not supposed to say that to your husband. Grow, what were you thinking? Come on. It'll help you get it together because you don't have those friends who are like the single ones with no man who are trying to tell you how to act. You know what I mean? So this is the place to be. If you're in a relationship, you need to be, if you're in a, if you're engaged or you're married or even considering divorce, you need to be around Christian folks Amen. who are married and got it together and who are in that word. Because if you're surrounding yourself with those in this world, you're going to become like that word. Ooh, come on. Okay, so you need to take godly advice from the people who are seeking God for the answers. Amen. 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 My brother right here, we need to close. Uh, I too just want to thank this ministry. Uh, for everything that's added to our lives and our marriage. We came in here the first day and we were going through something, something big that could have really rocked our marriage. And uh, each week as we, we attended, we changed things in our marriage, we changed the way we communicated, we opened up the Bible a lot more, we spent more time together, we go on dates. And um, I think we have a ways to go, but I think with what we're getting from this ministry, it's just been a blessing to our life. And one other small thing, my, well, maybe not small, my parents have been divorced for 30 years and are getting remarried this week. So, so let me say some prayers. Amen. That is good. That is victory. We hope that we can bring them and buy them and tell us their testimony. You know? God does not slack in his promises. For a day is like a thousand years. Am I saying right? Yeah. And like a thousand years like one day, right? So let's let's <laughs> let's be real. So is it okay we pronounce some blessings on you? Uh, yeah. Really quick, I'm sorry. Okay? We have one more. Right, oh, let's just, more? yeah. Go oh. We really need to hear from Russia. Yes. We really do. Come on, Russia. Tell us. You know what? Honestly, uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> Honestly, my husband and I have a, a thing about being totally transparent. I mean, really. The thing is, is that a few weeks ago, he wanted, and I wanted, without argument, you know, a lot of y'all, uh, Rob and Stan, all of y'all, all, all the leaders, know what we've gone through. And it got to a place where he, I wanted him gone. And he wanted to be gone. And I saw him just a few weeks ago. I mean, he was so angry that he put a couple holes in the wall. He's got to fix them. <laughs> he was that angry. But God used me, his wife, who did not want him around, to speak into his life. And I could hear a lot of things that Yoraka would say to me, Robin has said to me. 
You know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you just listen to God and follow what he says. The Lord spoke to me. I spoke into my husband's life against my will, but I did. I grabbed his hand and, you know, I couldn't throw him down, but he had to sit down. Um, he had to sit down and listen. And when the Lord used me to speak into his life, I saw this man cry like a baby. And of course I've seen him cry before, but this was different because he wanted to be gone. And I wanted him gone. But the love that I really had for him had to come through. I had to obey God. I spoke into his life. I walked away from him. I said, it's up to you, Lord. You know, and I told my husband, it's up to you. You do whatever it is you want to do. So bottom line is he stayed. He chose to stay. And I had to work on me to renew my mind as well to for us to stay together. Okay, I had already decided what I was going to do, etc. Uh, I'm sure he had. Bottom line is when we made the commitment to reconnect, um, this week alone,